Hello YouTubers out in YouTube land, it's me, your favorite Bible thumper, Mr. Morris, and welcome to Morris Ministries. And today we're going to be getting into the third day. Now as we discussed in other videos, we know that all of this stuff is actually taking place post the fall of Satan. Okay, because we know that each spirit was shown, you know, God created the heaven and the earth. He created everything that ever would and ever will be. And then he shows each one how to become something. You know, you will become the fruit, you will become a tree, you will become a pig, all that kind of stuff. Now, as we see Adam and Eve in the garden, obviously it hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. We know this to be true. So as it relates to that kind of a discussion, um, when Satan and them fall and Adam and Eve leave, we know which spirits will actually inhabit the universe and which God will make. And we get a lot into the physics in that different videos, but we know that all this stuff is actually post-fall Satan, and when he's making it, it's actually the way he has remade the earth because he made everything the first time. And this is actually an account of the series and by me, which means he made the second time for death to exist on the earth. So getting into the actual third day itself, you see in Genesis uh, 8 through 13. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, 9 through 13. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together onto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and gathered together the waters, called the seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself, after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Remember, each one of these cases is evening and morning, and not morning and night. So one of the reasons why the Jews on Friday evening celebrate their Sabbath, and they go on too. It's because everything starts to exhibit itself at night when you are sleeping. Now, things like rocks and trees are on a different scale because they are spiritually natured all the time they're not conscious of their own existence although they have means by which they know themselves it is not the same conditions by which humans know themselves but that is a conversation for a different time and the bible actually makes pretty good examples about how it let's say knows god's hand in the works you know the bible specifically talks about wider water cycles and jet streams in the oceans and fresh water springs in the seas and the bible never actually uses the word oceans it does use seas though and it's almost reminiscent of each other because we know that god made the earth to be habitable for people and that today's world we see being covered in 70 percent water it doesn't make it very habitable but it's this idea that water surrounds everything and that water is involved in everything and that we ourselves are composed with water. And it is this, this very basic principle of water. Water is a living thing. Jesus says he will fill our cup with living water. The water that I drink from, you shall not thirst again. Things like that. It is because water is actually alive. It is the only inanimate object in the Bible in which God considers to be a living thing. And it is for these very reasons, because God's hand is working that way. I mean, the magnetic field of most planets is actually resonant with water. It kind of goes back to the second day with the firmaments of the heaven, when he starts actually creating the dimensions that would be here. But the Bible even talks about pathways in the seas, these things that wouldn't be discovered until realistically in the late 18th century, 19th century even. And on an even more physics basis, you know, the idea of plasmas and water. You know, because the whole first half of the passage talks about the uh, separation of waters and calls of the earth. So water is a very prominent one which God uses in his works. You see, plasma even works like water. It is a more, it is the fourth state of matter. You know, we have uh, solid, liquid, gas, and there's plasma. Well, if you work plasma down, it's realistically more heated versions of liquids and solids themselves, which is a solidified liquid, if you want to look at it that way. 
little bit of plasma in that case is a completely uh, debonded particle itself and plasma research has shown that it will reform its connections when it starts to cool. However, energy will be lost, as, that, as with every system will, but it will actually reform the pairs in which it had made. It doesn't necessarily make anything new, and it knows the limits by which it can move. It has an outline oh, excuse me, for which its volume dissipates. And water is also a very specific thing. See, its actual molecular principles are one of very few, if not a very, very unique exception to the rule that ice floats. See, in most other chemical compounds, if you were to put their solid in a liquid form, or on anything else for that matter, uh, even its own material, if it was liquid form, like liquid concrete, solid concrete, solid concrete will, li will fall through liquid concrete. You know, ice does not. Ice is solidified liquid and it actually only freezes at the brim. And this is actually one of the reasons why life can exist the way it does today. Because if ice had formed on the bottom, if you were to super cool something and would have formed bottom to top instead of top to bottom, like water does, and it is a very unique exception, then nothing on the earth would exist the way it does today. It's just some really cool stuff we're getting into. Now, this is also one of the things where we start getting into the actual biological life. You know, trees start to form, the earth starts to be free. We also have this really cool thing, and I'll bring it back up, uh, in verse 11. You know, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. It's one of those really interesting things where God considers fruits, because they have seed, to be man. Fruits, by definition, are man. <laughs> Even though there's really no vegetable also labeled in the Bible, but we're not going to get into that. So every object is, has a male and female kind of origin. And it's the very first kind of example of something like that. But it also gives us the idea that, you know, the means by which these things work. You know, uh, how is it that the seed of a tree can become a tree? It's not necessarily evolution, and evolution will get into on a completely different subject. But trees function on the preliminary that animals will exist. Because trees can only function for a very short time without CO2 coming in. Because for NADPH and, what was it, ATP to exist in trees, they must be taking... CO2 in and they must also be having lighting because there's a light dependent reaction that exists within trees and there is a light independent reaction that happens with the trees. But since you know God already made the light, the trees can grow. It already has the means with which to grow and produce the sugars that will eventually become itself. And we know what's coming next. You know, uh, as people will come, because you have to have food for the animals before the animals exist. Well, the trees already have their food. Their food comes from the fact that light is coming in. It allows them to build the glucose that they need without necessarily having CO2 yet. And since we know the days are coming in which they will have that, it will allow them to grow and thrive. Not to mention, since this is existing technically within heaven, as we are living in the first level of heaven anyway, uh, God can actually sustain them by his own being. You know, what does what does Jesus say? You know, he says, I have bread that you know not of. <laughs> you can be self-sustaining on the word of God. However, physically, we as beings of physical nature have to have something beforehand. So really, this is the food cycle being laid down and really out and around for us. And with that, uh, any comments, questions? concerns or suggestions for a video just leave it in the description below and don't worry i'll put up some research and stuff so you can see exactly what i'm talking about more in real time with that thank you for tuning in